Virgo, welcome to December 2017 general tarot reading. Serena here, shuffling the cards. The heart of the matter is represented by the Six of Pentacles. This is a card of getting what you're worth. So, in a job setting, you can see the scales. And it's talking about parity, fairness, when it comes to matters related to Pentacles, which is uh, money and, you know, material goods. And so whether this is a situation involving salary dispute or it could even extend to work conditions, work hours. Maybe you're doing the work of two people and you don't think it's fair. Somebody is on maternity leave or some other situation and they never filled the position. They never replaced it. And they expect you to do it because you're the type of person, Virgo, who is capable of doing the work of two people. But maybe it's taken its toll or you just don't think it's fair. Sometimes the Six of Pentacles can indicate that in a marriage situation, there is kind of like this discussion of who is doing what. Uh, one person is staying home with the children. Is that enough? You know, um, I was reading something, I don't know, something in the newspaper. I don't know where it was, but it was like, maybe it was to Dear Abbey or something. Um, I think the husband wanted the wife not to stay home with the children, but also to work because he had to work. One of those types of situations where the other person feels like the person staying home with the children is copping out and they want that person to have to, you know, tough it out like they do. But, you know, then you think about what's going to happen. You have to hire uh, somebody to take care of the children. You have to uh, not have somebody there to cook meals. So there's going to be more takeout and all that. So sometimes when people are trying to make things fair, it can end up costing more money in the long run. And the other thing, too, is that you may be helping out a spouse. If a spouse is unemployed, you may be the prime breadwinner. And in certain circumstances, this can be kind of prickly because the other person may feel like they are in a position of dependency. And you may not be kind of lording it over them, but they may get kind of defensive about it. Sometimes it's you're helping out a family member because you have money to give and somebody's having a rough patch and you're trying to help them out. In the past position, we have the Queen of Cups, very psychic energy. This may be your mother, especially if she is a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, or has a lot of that naturally intuitive part of her. This could be, though, any female who is older than you, who's either a mother figure or um, a person that you consider like a a mentor or a counselor even. Maybe it's a spiritual uh, teacher, 
but this could be an aspect of yourself. I just went through the scenario of somebody staying home with their children. You may um, have given birth, and now you're in a position where uh, the money situation is rearing its ugly head. And money doesn't have to be ugly, but people make it that way because there's always power connected to it. And some people think they can use it to control. You know, the perfect example, I, I should have said this, you're staying home with your children and your partner is using money to try to control, like to lord it over you because you don't have that income. And that may be something that is a little bit uh, unnerving. What's represented right now is the fool and this is about going off in a new direction that is completely new to you and completely unknown. Now why would this be? Um, you may be trying something new. Maybe you're um, trying a new business from home or if there is some situation where you have gotten a divorce because the Queen of Cups can mean that um, you in some cases when I see the Queen of Cups I think of somebody who was able to know that their partner what their partner was up to and and the six of Pentacles could be like the uh, divorce proceedings where um, the judge was like doling out the estate or whatever you call it when a married couple breaks up the money between and now you're on your own so it could even be a situation like that you have your proceeds from the divorce and now you're going to take a little trip I actually get a couple of cards here about some Virgos taking a nice break from things. Maybe you want to press that reset button in December um, and like because you have this um, four of of swords and that's a card of retreat and so I could see a Virgo person not just going on some typical cruise but maybe going to a yoga type of a what do they call those where it's like a vacation a yoga retreat I guess they call it I can't think of the term but it's just that you go to some foreign country and you're in a beautiful location and you get to meditate but you're also enjoying the beach and things like that and so it's like a spiritual vacation the higher message is the nine of cups so this is the wish fulfillment card this is on the spiritual level though so it's talking about something changing within you or coming about the influences that is giving you that sense of satisfaction with your life at this time. Um, if this is on the spiritual level, because this is actually a card that can even be associated with self-indulgence, so as a spiritual card, it may be saying that you, if you have been somebody who has tolerated something for too long and now you're free from it, like the, um, the, the work scenario that I gave, you may um, have felt that you were in a situation where you were being taken advantage of and you left. And that feeling of leaving can be so exhilarating that um, the Nine of Cups is just reminding you to keep your feet on the ground. Um, the Nine of Cups is associated with indulgence, being, which really isn't typical for most Virgos. Virgos tend to be almost um, a little bit more very disciplined usually and not inclined towards overindulgence but if you're you're pent up enough you might um, occasionally feel that desire to just like run amok so <laughs> that's just a cautionary note there 
Uh, what crosses you is the Four of Cups. So this is a card um, that is dealing with that dissatisfaction. Um, I'm reminded of that saying, wherever you go, there you are. So even if you're traveling, um, Virgo, just remember that you can't um, escape from your basic sense of consciousness. And a lot of times we blame outer events or outer conditions for whatever is going on emotionally within us. And wherever you go, there you are. You're going to bring that consciousness to a deserted island, to the most beautiful place on earth. And if you don't change your thoughts, they will follow you wherever you go. And even if you have come out of, let's say, an oppressive relationship, and you can tell people these harrowing tales of like this person that you were with and how bad they were and blah, blah, blah. You were a part of that relationship. Somehow you attracted that relationship. And the challenge is to A, you know, figure out why and B, not to do it again. But um, you're, you were part of that dance. And speaking of, you know, reflecting on things, this is coming in for you. That's the Four of Swords about retreat, recharging your batteries. Maybe you've been through something so stressful that it affected you physically and you need to really just not do anything. But it's interesting that the Swords relate to thought because with this card, it's about kind of like almost like meditation. So that would mean stopping your thought. And yet the number four connects to foundation. So it's almost like getting your thoughts in order, not necessarily completely dropping all thought, but just becoming more or um, disciplined in your thoughts so that you make your mind work for you instead of against you. You're ruled by Mercury just like Gemini. And so you are maybe experiencing the Mercury retrograde in December more intensely. I don't know how people that have Mercury as a ruler experience um, Mercury retrogrades. It's happening from December 3rd through the 22nd. And, um, yeah, that's interesting that I got the Four of Swords because that's the perfect thing uh, when, when there's a Mercury retrograde is to, uh, to like, um, chill out and not to necessarily start new projects and things like that, but just to kind of review and research things. And I would say renew yourself. The outcome is the Three of Pentacles. So towards the end of the month, you may be back on the beat and ready to start something new. This is about a project, maybe involving other people. It's a card of teamwork, but definitely can be um, building something that really has potential. And you're doing it very methodically, the Architects card. And it's also that you're building something tangible. It's not um, just some pie in the sky thing. And whether or not this is um, a business that you're building or whether this is some project with other people that you're engaged in or a relationship, it's something that you are looking at from the, pra the most practical level and, and really trying to um, create those firm foundations. So I'm picking an additional card from my new Akashic Tarot deck. I buy these decks and then I uh, I want to utilize them because I tend to, in, in these um, readings, just use this Morgan Greer deck. I'm going to start linking all of the decks that I use in a particular reading below 
the video so that if anyone is interested, because I do get people asking me, and I decided to become an Amazon affiliate in order to uh, direct people to uh, Amazon. Oh, interesting. Eight of Roses Sangha community. Um, I I still haven't totally looked at all of the um, the information in the booklet, so. The, the bottom line with this deck is that it's not going along with the traditional tarot. So because of that, it's going to be different, and they use different. I think roses kind of, sort of, connects with the cups, but the definitions are certainly different. I'm just going to read what it says. Inside a room, people are seated around a table, conversing with interest and energy. There are many icons from different groups and societies. I can't say this word. A caduceus, <laughs> a sunflower. There's a sunflower. A Tibetan bell, an Egyptian scarab, a dream catcher, and a star of David are just a few. This card indicates that it's time to join or rejoin your group, your ashram, your tribe, or your sangha. Whatever you call it, it is a community that connects you, you with others of like-minded purpose and activity. There are many communities in each person's life, and still more that return from past lives. For instance, you have your family, friends, and work associates, but you also have the people with whom you share many creative, cultural, or spiritual purposes. New friends can also be coming your way at this time. Be open to these new connections. You will not only find help with current directives, but you may also reawaken past life relationships, talents, and disciplines. It's time for a happy sharing of your discoveries. The card I immediately thought of was that, Four of Swords, because I had mentioned about... Um, you know, going on some yoga retreat or something like that. And you don't have to go away for that. You can actually go to workshops in your area um, that have spiritual uh, retreats, day-long work, day workshops, and you meet like-minded people. So that's very cool. And I hope you enjoyed this, Virgo. I still have a promotion uh, till the end of December 2017 of 20% off all of my readings. The coupon code is Jupiter with all cap capital letters, and the link for my website or to my website is below. Otherwise, have a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. Take care. Bye.